Well, hello everybody. This is Stephen Butler back again with another video. Uh, but this time we're going to do something a little bit different. As you can see, uh, th there we're, we're watching a uh, coloring video of the drawing that I did last week. Now, the work that you're, that you're seeing happen before your eyes right now is not work that was done by me. Uh, I penciled and inked this thing and then uh, gave it to my daughter, Lily, who is with me right now. Hi, it's me. And uh, she, I had to like uh, corral her into doing this uh, video with me, even though we've done these uh, uh, before. We're the team uh, 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 duo uh, publishing. Uh, we were the team that brought you Fiona McCool and the Hound of Ulster and uh, soon to be bringing you uh, uh, more goodies uh, via Kickstarter, Patreon, all the different, uh, all the different methods we, uh, that, that we can. But right now we wanted to take a look at, uh, at the process of, uh, of, of Lily coloring uh, this. Um, and this is Mistress Ruby uh, and Abraxas, her iguana. Uh, introduced, is, I introduced them in your last video. In the last video that I did, yeah. And we could probably put a link to that video in the description yeah. of this video, uh, in case any of you guys missed that and want to and want to check it out. That way, you can see the whole thing because I mean, she was actually, um, she was actually conceived as a character on the video. Uh, so anyway, um, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about like right now we're seeing you, you pulled up a bunch of pictures of iguanas and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that's just, I'm sure that's reference for the colors, right? Yes. The first yeah. picture right there is the reference that she used right. when you to draw him. Yeah. Right. So I just pulled that up and I'm pulling ones up that looked like him. So do you do this a lot for your, whenever you color, whenever you color stuff, if you, if there's a certain thing that you're trying to make it look like that's like lit that's in the real world or something that... yeah if it's not something that's made up and i want mm -hmm. the colors to be accurate mm -hmm. i will pull up pictures so you can just you know get more accurate you're not just pulling colors out of your head right well we see that you got pictures of iguanas here because it's that's something that's that's alive and real but say say somebody because i know that you do commissions for people and stuff <laughs> And say somebody wants you to draw a, uh, or wants you to, well, draw and color uh, a character that's, like, known. Say, like, Thor, you're a big Thor fan. Uh, so if they wanted you to draw Thor and they have a certain look that they wanted him to, to look like, you would need to find reference for that to, to match the colors? Yeah, I could if they wanted certain colors. I mean, some people don't, I don't, you don't need to match colors for every single thing mm -hmm. unless... If I was doing like a comic book, like a mm -hmm. continuation thing, you would want the colors to match. Mm -hmm. But for like a single like pinup or commission, you, you can if you want to, but it's not as like necessary to color match. But yeah, you can. Right, right. So publication, it's a little bit different because of the, the it's it's more stringent that you get mm -hmm. the colors. And if it was like, colors, right? not like if it was like your own character. Right. And, but, and not like Thor, because Thor has 50,000 different versions of him. Right, sure. But it's like, oh, this is my original character, and this is the colors I would use, this is the reference sheet, then yeah, I have I'd to color pick from that. I have to think about that, too, when people ask me to to uh, draw Spider-Man or Captain America or Thor or Iron Man. All those characters have many, many different versions, and I have to say, well, which one? <laughs> which one are you looking for? And then, I, and then you know, I'll say, and some of them are very specific. Some of them are just you know let it be your choice i'm like okay yeah. be careful what you ask for because what i like might not be what they you know what they like but um some people just like to be to be surprised so tell me a little bit about your your thought process whenever because i asked you this the other day <laughs> and you said dad i don't think about anything just i do listen it. <laughs> to i listen to, i think about the music that i'm listening to so yeah. uh What's some of the music that you like to listen to whenever you whenever you draw? Oh Lord! Or the, all that stuff that you play in the car whenever we go. I like Mother Mother. Yeah. Mo who? Mother Mother. Mother Mother. <laughs> mother. I thought he was gonna say Mother May I? Yeah. Um, um, and I I listen to a lot of true crime videos while I like I okay. listen to them while I work. Okay. Because it's right. just good background noise. Okay. All right. <laughs> whatever <laughs> I, like to, to I like to listen to audiobooks and a lot of old time radio shows and uh and and you know uh i watch uh vi videos on uh, on youtube mostly i don't watch tv uh, uh anymore it's just not my preferred uh uh method unless i'm watching something with your with your mom yeah if i can you did keep that her, today. It, yeah i did i did and she <laughs> stayed awake the whole the whole time i count that a, a, a put that in a win-win column <laughs> 
So, um, so you don't really have any. You don't really think about. I mean, well, you don't have color theory running through your head. It depends on what you're doing. So, with this piece, I knew what colors I wanted right off the bat. So well, you knew she was knew, Mrs. Ruby. She knew she had the red dress. That's, yeah, you gave me those I, I pictures. Told, I pulled yeah. them up briefly at the beginning. Right. But you know, there's not a whole lot to go into her red dress. And then I had the pictures of the iguana, so it wasn't too hard. But if I'm like doing like an original piece, I will think about color theory mm-hmm. and think about what colors would best go together. One thing I noticed about you, and especially in this coloring business, and it gets on your mama's nerves sometimes, simply because you give you you do so many different versions <laughs> because you say hmm, maybe it looks good this way and then oh wait and i think we're going to see some of those different versions in yeah. this video later later on sometimes is, you have to find the your, best version okay and so that's your that's your answer for that <laughs> that's your reasoning <laughs> for doing different versions because you think you're like oh maybe this would look better or no maybe i can do this and sometimes you're right and sometimes you're wrong and the beauty of doing it digitally is if you don't like what you do you can just undo it <laughs> and you can and you can save all of the different yeah. like like the ones that you sent me would you send yeah. me like four different versions of the finished with the uh, different piece. backgrounds yeah. yeah yeah and uh you had favorites right but you wanted mm-hmm. to see what i now do yeah. you do that with other people too, right? One like say yeah. when you're doing when you're doing uh commissions for people, you'll do several different. I can do like different two versions. different, you know, like mostly with backgrounds, you know. Right, right, okay. Well, you under you understand why your mom yeah. is the way she is because yeah, it's I like, do. Lil, you're on a deadline. You got to get it done. You know, <laughs> you, the time time you know you don't get. It's not like you get paid by the hour. You know that type of that type of thing. The same kind of. Uh, she's like she could be an editor. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> she's probably a, the the hardest whip cracking editor that either one of us have uh, have ever have yeah. ever had. But but that's okay. That's totally <laughs> that's totally cool. Okay, so um, I know this is going like uh, the the video is going uh, uh, kind of slow. I mean, uh, but you're all the while you're doing this, you're you know you're thinking about what you're uh, what you're doing. Is there any? Do you work? <sighs> Um, like say whenever I color and I only color uh, by hand you know the mm-hmm. traditional way and you've been doing a little bit digitally I, I am but I but I'm talking about what I'm, I'm I'm trying to get to the point of, of how you think about laying your color down whenever I'm working uh, with watercolor like those watercolor dyes and stuff I have to think about working usually usually when when you're working with any kind of watercolor mm-hmm. you think of working from the lightest color to the darkest to the darkest yeah. color uh because that just you, it gives you more room to to play mm-hmm. you know that uh, uh that way and once you set that color down it's down there's no and, and it's easier to lay a color on top of a lighter color and make it darker than it is to you know once you've got a dark yeah. color there it's there you know mm-hmm. and i know it's different with digital you can well you can just like change it you know uh but do you do you think about that whenever you are coloring do you work from light to dark or do you have a specific area that you like to focus on first and 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 and, and then spread out from there or is it so an thing? so when i do like when i did this um, I take my entire piece and I put a background color behind it, like a solid color. Right. And I'm then I lay purple. in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It just I use I use a purple for the entire thing because it, it just helps my eyes Is better it than like a. To your eye to yeah, see the purple? it's a, it's like when I, I sketch in like blue pencil. Okay. It's better than just you know black on white. Mm-hmm. But anyways, I do uh, just fill in like just the figure, mm-hmm. and then I lay in my flats, and then I do my shadows, and then I do my highlights, mm-hmm. and I can do several layers of those. Right, and you did that with this one too, right? Yeah. You put a, but we're not seeing it on this video. We're just seeing the straight color against the white white background Mm -hmm. see i'm still i'm still learning all of this all of this layers and stuff Mm -hmm. i'm doing the one right now it it confuses or the blood whatever it it confuses me how okay okay i just saw something something change on this on the screen there that's just me hiding and reappearing the layers gotcha and then toward the end i'll do some overlays to 
Okay, I you see. Know, I, I, I see. It. I see you playing with it right here now. Yeah. There you go with the with the background. See, so she's laying all <laughs> different. It looks like she's going through all the different seasons of the. Of the of that's the me year. doing a drop shadow. A drop behind shadow. The figure. You, you you use that a lot in Fiona, didn't it? Yeah. Fiona McCool. Uh, and it just helps pop uh, the character out of the background a little bit more. Right, and you, it looks like you you played around with texture in the yes. background with this. Yeah. With this. I uh, mean, we didn't even end up doing this one, but it's whatever. <laughs> no, and the re I like this. Yeah. I like this a lot, and we may use it for something. I mean, you've got that texture in there now, right? You saved yep. it. You can use it for anything. Um. Uh, but with and and is this looked fine whenever it was by itself mm -hmm. but when you added that the crimp well she you're going to see later we're going to see a logo uh come i created a logo and she colored it and we're going to lay it on top of here and it just looked a lot better uh against uh against uh not so busy of a of a mm -hmm. background no this is where you went in you add a texture. Oh, is on. this where? Yeah, I added a little bit of a darker. You like to do that. Dark, and I did, it seems like I did some stuff. Well, right now lizard, you're texturing right? on the iguana. Yeah. yeah. And then you go in on her. Right. And so this is just me playing, playing around, learning, you know, what she's teaching me on, um, on her uh this is all done on a i on an ipad pro right? yeah i use clip studio paint clip studio paint and you also have what's that i have procreate program? yeah um i've just i've used clip studio paint for a long time i had it when it was still manga studio right that's um, what it was previously known as yeah, right? yeah yeah i used um when i started digital art that's the program i used uh -huh. and then when i got my ipad i just transferred over okay and you know I, it's great it's like a artist friendly version of photoshop and I love it. And you've worked, you've used Photoshop before. I hate but Photoshop. You're great. Okay, well, you're you're. It's you're... just confu. It's just confusing. I just don't like it. I like Clip Studio Paint a whole lot better. <laughs> and and you used you used Clip Studio Paint for the entire uh, Fiona, Fiona McCool. McCool. Yep. And we've seen we know what that book looked like. Yep. And so it was it it, it I put it again. Uh, I put it up to anything <laughs> else out there as far as. As far as the slickness of the of the finished product, so uh, so we're coming kind of kind of sort of to the uh, to the end of yeah. the actual coloring, right? Am mm -hmm. I still? I, it's hard for me to tell because I, I don't have my glasses. Okay, so I'm we're like, about to do yeah, the logo. Yeah, and I'm, I'm I know I blended a lot of mm -hmm. a that's lot what of you're that doing right stuff. now. Too. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I love the blending tools and the you blurring do. tools and the, what's it called, running on fiber tools <laughs> and, and, the, and the soothing watercolor uh, uh, tools. There's just all kind of stuff that you can make. You can, uh, you, you can take those hard lines and really smooth them, smooth them out. And, and I don't I just like to play. I just like to play with it. I don't know. I've never colored an entire, you know, comic on my, on my own. I've just done you know uh bits and bits and pieces here and there but it might be kind of cool to to do that one one thing that i do like to do uh is color it and i've done this for several of my um uh, i did it for that stand-up that i take to different conventions and stuff that we do oh here we go with the crimson crimson shadows but i'll 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 color it uh i'll color my pieces with uh with just watercolor and then I'll take it into your iPad Pro, and then I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll clean it up uh, uh, there. Mm -hmm. Speaking of cleaning it up, and uh, she's doing something here, and actually you just did this just a, an hour ago, right, or something yep. something like that. And I told you, and I think it might have. I, I don't know if you really understood what I was talking about. I wanted her to do some kind of like a a fade type effect going from a going from a light red, since we knew that this was going to be like an all red thing. But I uh, thought we would use the shadows part as uh, as the bottom, you know, as, as as a darker color than the than the top. And mm -hmm. here you see the finished uh, the finished product uh, that we uh, that we did, um, Mr. Ruby and Abraxas Crimson Shadows is going to be a project that I am uh, I'm pretty much sure right now that I'm going to be doing on Patreon. So, uh, so follow us uh, for more videos on that. Thank you, Lily, for, for being with me during this uh, video. You're welcome. And we will talk to you soon. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.